Well, thank you very much, uh, President. Um, it is a great honour to be elected to the Academy. Uh, as the President says, relatively few surgeons are elected. Um, it's particularly an honour to give this uh, talk with um, a, a modest uh, title. So, it's late in the day, uh, and it's been a long day, and so I thought I might lighten things a bit. So this, this talk uh, is relatively science light. Um, what I want to do is make some personal observations uh, uh, about uh, the treatment of cancer and how it relates uh, to biology. Now this is colorectal cancer. I want to focus the talk uh, in, in, in this area, although this is really just a paradigm for any solid organ uh, malignancy. Now, it's a lethal cancer. Uh, it's the third most common cause of cancer in men uh, and women, and the third cause of uh, cancer uh, deaths. Now, accepting its lethality, um, it is actually, at an early stage, uh, 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 an eminently treatable cancer. And if you look in this cartoon at stages one to three, where the cancer is confined to the bowel wall, uh, it is eminently uh, curable. And uh, the uh, outcomes have been improving very much in recent years. And the best data to illustrate this is actually my own. Uh, I say this. Uh, <laughs> Uh, unashamedly, um, this is uh, this is from the 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 the, the, the facts trial of colorectal cancer follow up, and what you see here is that uh, depending on stage, six to eighty percent of patients are alive ten years after diagnosis, and this is all cause uh, mortality. Now the important thing is that these results come from ordinary district general hospitals uh, in England, but they are comparable to the best of any centres internationally. Now, you will hear it said that cancer outcomes in the UK are worse than other Western countries. I would contend, stage for stage, this absolutely is not true. Uh, the problem is the data, and the problem is also the stage at which patients in this country often present. When they come into treatment, they're actually treated extremely, ex extremely well. So I want to look now at the relative contribution of surgical and medical management in this uh, condition. So let's take uh, 10 people uh, with potentially curable colorectal cancer. Surgery alone will cure seven of them. Okay. Now, if you add medical management to this, you may just about get another one out to five years. But... That's questionable. So if you look at this graph, this illustrates it well. This comes from the Quasar trial, a big trial of adjuvant chemotherapy in uh, colorectal cancer. This is a benefit from surgery. This is a benefit from uh, medical oncological uh, management. So those of you of a certain age will um, remember uh, Sir Lancelot Spratt. And crude though it may seem, his, his maximalist approach to cancer surgery, uh, exemplified by his immortal statement, just cut it out, is actually still the best thing we have in treating cancer uh, for most solid organ malignancies. Now, uh, I've indicated that surgery works best for early stage cancer, but in fact it also has a role where the... Uh, cancer is metastasized to distant organs. And this is, um, I want to tell you a couple of stories, because sometimes that's better than showing you lots of data. So this is a 35-year-old man who presented with right colonic cancer, and in his liver was about two kilograms of uh, tumor metastasis. And there's a little bit of liver here that looks okay, but in fact, there's actually a metastasis in that as well. But with modern surgical techniques, you can actually get this out, and you can leave enough liver behind uh, for the patient to survive. 
And even when uh, it invades vital structures like the IVC, you can, you can take it out and, and, and replace them. Now, how can, you, how can one achieve this? Well, um, you remember the, uh, the legend of Prometheus. Um, Prometheus upset Zeus, and uh, Zeus had him chained to a rock. And every day, an eagle came down and ate his liver. And every day, the liver regenerated, and then the eagle came back and feasted again. Now, the Greeks could not possibly know that the liver, uh, almost unique among solid organs, will regenerate. And as liver surgeons, we can take it out time and time and time again, and each time it will grow back. Now, one of the key proteins involved in this regeneration is hepatocyte growth factor, and this is relevant to my talk uh, later on, so just remember that. So this is the liver of this individual. It's nice, nice... Uh, volume. He's alive and well 20 years later, and incidentally, he is delighted to appear on this picture in public, um, and he also has helped us with various PPI, PPI uh, activities, so uh, he's delighted to be here too. Now, is there anything special about this patient well, and his tumour? Well, the biology is probably interesting. This, this primary tumour was microsatellite unstable. Now, microsatellite instability is a form of genetic instability that produces neoantigens. And so there's a strong immunological response to these tumours. And I have no doubt that this is in part the reason why he's alive 20 years later. Although really good surgery also had a major part to play. <laughs> now, here's a completely different case. Okay, this is a 51-year-old woman who presented with a perforated sigmoid cancer. That means the cancer is disseminated all over the abdominal cavity. And in the liver, there's a upward of 100 uh, metastases. So this is not good. Uh, and there is no surgical approach that will allow us to cut out of all, all of this disease. So we had to have a different, different approach here. Now, um, so tuximab is uh, an antibody to the epidermal growth factor receptor, which is uh, a protein on the cell surface which is involved in, in, in cell division. And efficacy has been shown in colorectal cancer. So this patient was uh, recruited um, to a clinical trial called COIN. It's a happy coincidence that Tim Moan, who's the chief investigator of COIN, was also admitted uh, today. So the patient went into this trial, and the cancer largely uh, disappeared. So what did we do then? Well, we uh, took it out uh, with an extended hepatectomy. And then a year later, she popped up another uh, metastasis, and that was ablated. And then two years later, she popped up a lung metastasis, so we took that out, and now she's out at 10 years. And it's, it's probably actually cured of disease. So is there anything special about this patient? Well, by coincidence, uh, while we were doing this, while we were managing this patient, we were doing a small study looking at uh, lymphocytic infiltrates in uh, colorectal uh, metastasis. And um, what we found is in this particular patient, the metastasis was stuffed full of T-cells. So again, as in the previous patient, there's a host response that is responsible for a remarkable uh, clinical response to, to treatment. So, um, this is an exceptional case, and most cases of liver metastasis that we operate on uh, don't have anything like this disease burden. Yet, uh, over half of them will, after their surgery, at some stage relapse, and the majority will, will actually die of disease. So we had a great idea. What if we give this really effective therapy to patients who are not quite as bad as this, in the hope that you'll get rid of the micrometastatic disease that are obviously leading to the uh, relapse? So fortunately, CRUK thought this was a really good idea too, and so they funded this trial, which is called New Epoch. 
and patients were either had the sort of conventional type treatment of a bit of chemotherapy, an operation, a bit more chemotherapy, or they got the chemotherapy plus the, the antibody uh, cetuximab. Now, the results were dramatic. However, not in the way that we thought. What you can see here is there's been a very significant detriment to the, the cancer-free survival of patients who were treated uh, with the cetuximab therapy. And this amounted to about nine months loss of cancer-free uh, life. Statistically, this is really significant, but unfortunately, the effect is clearly in the wrong direction. Now, it's really difficult to reconcile massive, really good response in one patient situation, and in this clinical trial, quite, quite the reverse. So we had to try and dissect the problem to see what the cause of this was. Now, um, some of you are familiar with uh, forest plots, perhaps some not. This is a forest plot. It's a graphical method by which we can look at different subpopulations within a trial and look at the effect of the intervention. So if we do that here, what you see is that patients who have bad prognostic features, such as poorly differentiated tumours, multiple metastases, actually are not harmed by the drug. They don't benefit either, actually, but they're not harmed by it. By contrast, uh, patients who are what we would regard in the good prognosis group, and that is well-differentiated tumours, very small numbers of, of metastases, are very seriously harmed. Now, we've looked at this in a different way also. And here we've looked at the magnitude of the surgical operation. And just at the end, I've put in the patient we talked about earlier with a completely uh, inoperable disease. And what you can see is the harm is all in the patients who have the most minimal type of liver surgery, maybe a segment or a few segments removed. Whereas the patients who have a hemihepatectomy or an extended, hemihepate an extended hepatectomy, they actually don't benefit, but they are not harmed either. <laughs> so how can we uh, put all this together and explain these rather contradictory results? Well, you recall when we were talking about liver generation, I mentioned uh, hepatocyte growth factor. Well, hepatocyte growth factor acts on a cell surface receptor called CMET. Now, CMET is also found on cancer cells. Uh, and in patients who are treated with cetuximab, this pathway is often activated. And indeed, uh, the data shows that the CMET pathway is, in fact, a, a, a mechanism of resistance to cetuximab therapy. So what do we think might be happening here? So patients who are treated with uh, cetuximab, this pathway may be upregulated. And when you resect the liver, you get a large surge of hepatocyte growth factor. The effect of this is that it's going to cause liver regeneration. But might it also be acting on uh, micrometastatic disease in the liver and cause proliferation of micrometastasis and hence disease progression? Well, it sounds like a, a, a really good idea. Um, is it the case? Well, we have some evidence that it might be. What we've done is we've taken the primary tumours and the metastasis from the patients in this trial and looked at the expression of CMET protein on the surface of the, uh, in, 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 in the various tumours. Now, if you look at the group on the left here who have not had cetuximab, you can see that there, it makes no difference whether the CMET goes up or down between the primary and the metastasis. By contrast, if you look at the patients who have been exposed so, to uh, cetuximab, what you see is if the CMET protein expression goes up 
between the primary and the metastasis, there's a marked detriment to the survival of the patient. So at least, on, uh, at least it would appear that our theory does have uh, some basis. Now, at present, what we're doing is we're trying to develop an in vivo model to try and, uh, to, to, to try and dissect this pathway in more detail. I have to say this is proving quite difficult, and I maybe won't talk any more about the successes or lack of success of this at, at, at the moment. So I really want to finish there. Um, uh, surgical treatment of cancer, I think, r does remain the main principal way of achieving cure for patients with solid organ malignancies, even when it's in the, the metastatic setting. Um, but curing metastatic disease relies on several things. It relies on uh, certainly good surgery, it relies on tumour biology, and it relies very much on a multidiscipline treatment of these patients. Now, a bit of a caution about the new drugs. The effect of new, the modern target, what's called targeted anti-cancer agents is clearly not always predictable. We don't understand the biology well enough. And this really emphasizes the need for well-performed uh, clinical trials in this area. When we did the new EPOC trial, we had sent us saying to us that it was unethical for us not to give these patients cetuximab. Uh, but look, look how it turned out. So, it's very important that these things all ought to be looked at in a, in a, in a properly constructed clinical trial. Last, I think that uh, everybody's I think, familiar with uh, GEL and these initiatives to sequence routinely cancer genomes. And this is uh, unquestionably going to give us a better understanding of the cancer biology and also allow us to personalise cancer treatment, and this shows great promise. So thanks very much to everybody in the team in Southampton who've helped me with this, my collaborators nationally and internationally, and also for these uh, funding bodies, and I hope they will all continue uh, to support me and give me money in the future. Thank you very much. <laughs>